Assalamu alaikum and thank you for joining us. Today, I would like to begin my statement by expressing our deep concerns at the alarming rise in violence against Muslims in today's India. On this Ram Navmi, anti-Muslim violence was reported in at least eight states of India as extremist outfits attacked a number of mosques and other Muslim-owned buildings. A seminary was burned down in Nalandar district of Bihar, resulting inter alia in burning of around 4,500 books, including the Holy Quran. The terrifying rise in Islamophobic and hateful acts against Muslims in India is a consequence of the pursuit of a majoritarian Hindutva agenda and anti-Islam and anti-Muslim rhetoric rife in Indian politics. We welcome the statement of OIC expressing its concern on rising anti-Muslim incidents in India and urge India to take firm action against the extremists fomenting communal violence and hatred against Muslims. India must take demonstrable steps to curb the rising tide of Islamophobia to provide the protection to Muslims for practicing their faith and account those responsible for such hateful acts. We reiterate our concerns about the safety and well-being of Kashmiri leaders and human rights defenders who are under incarceration in prisons across IIOJK and India. We welcome the statement of UN Special Rapporteur on the situation of human rights defenders, endorsed by the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Peaceful Assembly and of Association, in which the Special Rapporteur has highlighted the continuing repression of the Kashmiri civil society in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. She has explained how Unlawful Activities Prevention Act is being applied to smear and silence the civil society media, and human rights defenders. She has urged India to end its crackdown against Kashmiri human rights defenders. We endorsed her statement that India must be held accountable where it violates human rights obligations. We also urge India to bring an end to suppression of journalists and human rights defenders and to its policy of stifling freedom of expression and assembly in the occupied territory. Minister for Planning, Development and Special Initiatives, Professor Essen Iqbal is on, is on, on official visit to China. In China, the minister attended the annual conference of the Bao Forum for Asia and presented Pakistan's perspective on Belt and Road Initiative and CPEC. He expressed Pakistan's desire to jointly explore opportunities for shared growth for developing countries with critical investments to fill economic gaps. The minister's meetings with senior government officials focused on high quality development of CPEC, which is marking a decade of its inception. The visit underscores the importance both countries attach to realizing the full potential of CPEC and bilateral development cooperation. The visit concludes today. On 3rd of April, 2023, advisor to the Prime Minister on Culture, engineer Amir Mukam, virtually participated in the SEO Ministers of Culture meeting hosted by India. He highlighted Pakistan's rich cultural heritage and underlined the need for promoting cultural exchanges and cooperation under the SEO framework to foster mutual understanding. As an active member of SEO, Pakistan will continue to participate in all SEO activities and continuously contribute to their outcomes. <sighs> Lastly, I have an important announcement. Our High Commissioner to Malaysia, Ambassador Amna Baloch, has been appointed as Pakistan's ambassador to Belgium Luxembourg and the European Union. Ambassador Amna Baloch is a senior foreign service officer with vast diplomatic experience in Pakistani missions in Denmark, Sri Lanka, China, and Malaysia. 
Before her current assignment, she served as Consul General at Chengdu, China. She's expected to take up her assignment shortly. I thank you.